What's up guys and welcome to my top 10 worst movies of 2018. It's always very exciting to do lists like this, uh, you know, to wrap the year up uh, with a bow at the, at the end and everything. Uh, so, if you have uh, to check out my top 10 best movies of the year, that's up on this channel now. But, we're here for the top 10 worst movies. So, keep in mind, my list might be different than your list. Uh, we might have very different opinions here, but uh, regardless, I'm looking at my list, and it, this is this is a, a lot of really just crap, <laughs> a lot of nonsense here. So, without further ado, I do have two honorable, oh, dishonorable mentions, I should say, uh, only two dishonorable mentions. Uh, I did see a lot of crap this year, but I think when the movies were crap, they were really crap. Uh, I saw a lot of other movies that I, I don't necessarily think were good movies, but do I think they're the worst of the year? No, because there's definitely redeemable qualities to this, to them. Uh, these films really have uh, little to none redeemable qualities. Uh, there's a lot more bad than good. So for the dishonorable mentions, the two dishonorable mentions I have are I Feel Pretty and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Uh, just my opinion here, particularly on uh, Jurassic World, if some of you loved it, I totally respect your opinion, but for me, I feel like it was a poor excuse for a sequel. It was nonsense, it was filler, it was all over the place, and uh, I, I, I didn't really care for it that much. So, moving in to my 10th least favorite movie of 2018, and that is... Next. Dare me to choose which one of you to kill. No! So Truth or Dare is a movie that it's 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 horrible. And the ending of this movie is is probably the worst part of it. It it, it gets more and more ridiculous as the film progresses. And the end of this movie is it's stupid, it's silly, and uh, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. But what I will say about Truth or Dare, I could probably end up watching this movie without really hating myself watching it, because it's just so dumb, but entertaining at the same time. Uh, I felt felt like I wanted to put it on the list because it, it is a, a really bad movie. I mean, it's not a good movie. You know, it is a stupid, silly movie with a horrible ending. Uh, but if you did go in to see this movie, you probably can get slightly entertained from it, even though what you're watching, you can realize, is kind of garbage. But, uh, alright, so, moving on to my ninth least favorite movie of 2018, and that is... What do you want from me? Thing. So the commuter with Liam Neeson. This movie came out. I think it. I think it came out in January. I don't even remember. It was January or February? But I just remember watching this movie, and uh, it really, just it was very hard for me to get invested into it. I thought it was kind of dull. I thought that the action stuff wasn't very exciting. I felt Liam Neeson wasn't doing anything new in the movie. He was just being his casual Liam Neeson. Uh, Patrick Wilson's character uh, kind of was pointless to me. It just went nowhere. And the ending to that movie as well got so over the top and so ridiculous, I just wanted to, to check out uh, from the moment I checked in. <laughs> Pretty much, but the opening to the film—I do remember the opening to the film was very intriguing. Uh, but then it just start, starts to get really sloppy. It was kind of like a cheaper, crappier version of that non-stop movie he did, where it was in the airplane. I, I liked that, but this I felt like it was—it was sort of the same kind of, but ten times worse, uh, and not very engaging or exciting. So moving on to my eighth least favorite movie of 2018.
it's time. Oh, the Nutcracker in the Four Realms. I I tend not to remember this movie. I try not to remember this movie. Uh, it was a poor excuse for a Nutcracker film. Uh, I feel like the movie was all over the place. It was very hard to get invested into it because of all the nonsense that's going on. The CG I thought was pretty bad. The side characters I thought were worse. Uh, what they did with Keira Knightley's character I just thought was ridiculous. And from the moment something happens in that movie, I was totally turned off completely. And I could not wait for it to wrap up. The movie just makes horrible choices. Uh, it just, it, it really has nothing to do with the, with the Nutcracker story because what happens, and there's a twist, they try to take it in a really weird direction, and I'm not entirely sure why. The movie flopped, and uh, there's no surprise there. Okay, so moving on to my seventh least favorite movie of 2018. Robin of Loxley anymore. You're Robin Hood. Now, Robin Hood was another film that when it started, the first, like, five minutes of the movie, I'm thinking, wow, this is actually not bad. You know, this is, this is pretty intriguing. But immediately when the film cuts to its first action sequence, it's like a war sequence or whatever, from the moment that happens, and the movie continues... I was like, oh, this is the kind of movie this is. And uh, it's so poorly written. Things are so convenient in the film. Somebody gets his hand chopped off at the beginning of the movie, and I don't think there's any bloodshed at all. The person should have bled to death and died, but doesn't, and proceeds to survive the rest of the film. Uh, so I thought that it was just really bad. There was a lot of convenient things. The script was horrible. The acting was subpar. But I just feel like the, the, the main fault here to this movie is the screenplay and the direction. It just sort of feels unfocused on what it wants to be uh, all at the same time. Ben Mendelsohn is pretty bad. I mean, well, he's not bad, but, but his character is bad because all he does, if he had a mustache, he would be twirling it the whole time. Because all he does is scream a lot and give a lot of weird insults. And, uh, yeah, so that, that's Robin Hood. I, I thought the movie was a train wreck, pretty atrocious. But, uh, okay, talking about atrocious, uh, let's get into my sixth worst, least favorite movie of 2018. Hello. Conjuring Universe is, uh, it's a little, it's a bit split for me. Uh, how many films do they have now? They have the two Conjuring films, they have the two Annabelle films, and the Nun. So they have five movies. And I only like, I like three of them. So they're, they're in the majority with me at the moment. But, uh, we'll just have to see how the, the next few pan out. But, uh, I like The Conjuring, The Conjuring 2, and Annabelle Creation. Uh, I actually really enjoy those movies, but the first Annabelle and the Nun, they're about equally garbage to me because they try to be scary when really it's so repetitive. In this movie, there's so many shots and scenes of this creepy church or wherever they are, I don't even remember, but wherever they were, that creepy environment. You know, they, they, they just had a scene after scene after scene where they hear something, they walk toward it, there's a jump scare. The next scene, they, they, they walk toward something, there's a jump scare. There's a really weird scene where somebody gets buried underground, I thought was a little off-putting and a little strange. Then the movie progresses, and I'm thinking, A, this doesn't really make any sense, and B, it's absolutely ridiculous, and the climax of the movie, it's not scary. It's, it's like amateurish, and they try to connect it to The Conjuring, the first Conjuring movie, which I kind of enjoyed the attempt, but I didn't care because the characters and the circumstances in the movie, there was just, it was so dull and so boring. This movie was 
pretty bad, so that's that's number six. So, moving on to number five. Boy, am I happy that these movies are over. Uh, Fifty Shades Freed is the finale of the Fifty Shades trilogy, and uh, even though it might not be the worst in the trilogy, that doesn't mean that it's a good movie. This is a totally unfocused movie. There's there's like a, a side plot teased with this, this renovator, this house renovator or whatever. They're trying to look at this new location and... And there's this really attractive uh, home interior decorator or whatever that comes in. And, and that's sort of, you know, hinted upon in the trailers of the movie. That really goes nowhere. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole side plot with, with one of his past mistresses or whatever that's hinted upon. But you don't see any of it. And you don't care about any of it. There's a really weird car chase sequence in the movie. Uh, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. And then it finally wraps up. And you're like, is that it? You know, that's the movie? Okay, out I go. And uh, never to come back. Uh, I will never come back for sure. So <laughs> that, that's that. So moving on to number four. So, Slender Man, uh, what's there to say about this movie that I didn't already say in my review? Uh, this movie is, it's not scary, it is a series of events that happen for no reason whatsoever other than a group of people watching a, a video online. Uh, that's really all, that's it. That's really all it is. And the movie goes as you'd expect. There's no really character development to any of these characters. Slender Man, when he's on screen, it looks pretty bad. The CG is pretty bad. It's not scary. The acting isn't that great. Uh, there's just a couple ridiculous scenes in the movie. And the whole movie is ridiculous. It goes nowhere in the ending. Some of the last lines of the movie are weird and just out of place and... The whole movie is out of place, and I think if they wanted to make a Slender Man movie, they should have made it more compelling. I mean, why, why do we care about this movie? It looks drab, it looks dark, it looks gloomy, there's, there's, which I can understand, but if you're going to have such a weak screenplay, with such weak characters that we have to watch and follow, I feel like there just should have been something more to, to latch myself onto. Uh, but what we got was an extremely dull attempt at a Slender Man movie. Horribly written and uh, just, just uh, you know, uh, it feels like there was no effort put in to anyone who made this movie. It just felt like it was a total cash grab. Um, but it's time for the top three, guys. We're, we're at the top three worst movies of the year for me and uh, I really despise these three movies quite a bit. Uh, I hope to never see them again, uh, and I plan never to see them again. So without further ado, number three. Bang. Bang. So, A Wrinkle in Time was a movie that I was actually excited to see. Ava DuVernay, I mean, I didn't love Selma, but I really liked it. I thought that her direction was solid for the movie, and she's coming into this property. Oprah Winfrey's in the, in the film, you know, and, and I was just really excited to see it. And it's a book adaptation, and I heard that it was almost impossible to translate this from a book to a film. I believe this is the movie I heard that about, and uh, if that's the case, it's true. Because the opening of the movie, again, intriguing. But once the story, or whatever you want to call it, actually starts to pick up, and these characters start to go on this adventure, A, you don't really understand what's happening. B, these three witches come out of nowhere, absolutely nowhere, 
and they just come into the movie to, to help our lead character through whatever kind of paradox that they are, this, this time vortex, whatever they're doing, I don't even know, it was ridiculous. The film continues, it tries to get exciting, which it's not. There's a horrible twist in the movie uh, with one of the characters, which I thought was totally weird and just odd, and I couldn't even invest myself into it because the child actor wasn't doing it for me in the first place. So it was, it was a giant mess. And then the movie ends, and you're expected to be like, oh, what a great adventure, when that was just a great pile of crap and a total waste of my time. Uh, hated it, hated it, hated it. So, moving on to number two. Maybe some of you have forgotten about this movie, but I sure didn't. Uh, it's, it's been on this list for, for quite some time. Right from the moment that I saw this movie, you know, the, the lead character played by Jason Clark, I believe, is the lead character of this film. It's so hard to invest yourself into him because in the beginning of the movie, he's introduced as this really kind of eccentric fellow with all of these women that that he's uh having at once and uh i just i felt like you know why should i care about this guy he's a doctor a psychiatrist or whatever he is and he's going to talk to helen mirren's character which they think she's kind of insane because there's ghosts in the house or whatever and this is a true story from what i believe but the writing and the pacing and the horrible uninspired direction is what tanks this movie and the horrible th climax of the film, uh, it was, I don't even quite remember the whole entire climax, to be completely honest with you. But what I do remember uh, is that it was unengaging, just a lot of loud sound effects for no good reason. I don't even, I, I don't know, there was like a hallucination scene at the end of this or something, I, I don't know. But it was bad, and then the movie wraps up, and I was like, wow, what a train wreck of a movie that was. And it's not, it's not scary. Not for a second, it's not scary. I think there's a side plot with a, a woman and, his, and her son. The, the red-headed people, I believe, uh, I, I think. And that kind of goes nowhere. It was just, there was a big, big waste of time. So, guys, it's time. It's time to, to talk about my worst, least favorite movie of the year. We finally gotten to that point. I just talked about a lot of crap uh, to, to all of you, so I hope you were able to get through that. I really recommend you not watch those movies, but if you have seen them and you and you even liked some of them, well, you know, feel free to, to comment below. But it's time for number one, and my least favorite movie of 2018 is. Oh boy, what's to say about the first purge? Well, here's what's to say about it. Uh, this movie is a total re retread. Retread? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a complete copy in a way of the purge two, of the purge three, and now we have the purge four. But this is the first purge, so we're supposed to be really finding out how the purge came to be and how it actually started. When really, you get hints of it, but you, you don't really get it completely. Marissa Tomei is totally wasted in this movie. There's no reason to care about any of these characters. We're supposed to be following a drug lord or something who has, who has a, a, a nephew or something, and then he, the nephew has a sister, and we're following these characters, which I thought, okay, but they're wearing all these crazy masks, the sound effects out of control, the, the movie's out of control, and it just went nowhere for me. And, and the action wasn't exciting because I didn't give a crap about any of these characters. The last Purge movie was bad, but I think this one's even worse because, I mean, I don't know. I just, it did absolutely nothing for me. I didn't care about it. I was so bored I couldn't wait to get the hell out of that theater. And that scene toward the end of the movie where the, the, the lights are flashing in the, the hotel or wherever they are, this building and the electricity is shorted or whatever and the lights are continuously flashing. I was curious 
why movie theaters didn't have signs on the doors to this auditorium saying, Epilepsy warning, you know? Because Incredibles 2 had one, Spider-Verse had one, and the scenes in those movies didn't affect me at all. Watching this movie and that scene, it was like a assault, a full assault on my eyes. I literally had to look away because I couldn't take it anymore. You know, the movie was actually starting to attack me. And that does not happen often, ever. And it did with this one. I hated it. And I guess they're making another one. From what I hear, there's a Purge 5 coming, so let's keep our fingers crossed. But the, the series continues to make money, and they're just going to do the same thing again. What's it going to be called? The Second Purge? Where are they going to take it now? Who cares? Who cares? Because we don't care about these characters. We're not invested in the story. The best Purge movie was the first one. I believe it went downhill extremely hard after that. But uh, So there's my list, guys. There's my top ten worst movies of the year. Do you agree with those? Do you disagree with those? Would you mix up my list a little bit? Would you add films in? Would you take films out? Uh, would you shake it all about? <laughs> Comment below in the comment section. And uh, give me your thoughts on, on my list here. What, what do you think about it? Also, you can subscribe to this channel. For my top 10 best movies of 2018. My reviews for all the new releases are up on this channel now. If you guys are interested in following me on Patreon, you can feel free to do so. Uh, help out this channel. I'll be able to, to do more Blu-ray unboxings uh, mainly. Uh, maybe some more game walkthroughs and playthroughs more reviews uh, and all that. I wasn't able to do a top 10 Blu-rays of the year this year. I just didn't get enough Blu-rays. I just wasn't able to do it. Uh, 4K is, you know, to, to, to put a fair list together. So, you know, maybe maybe next year we'll be able to do that. But uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video. You can also follow me on Instagram at King Arises 131 And guys, that's been it. Thank you very much for watching my top 10 least favorite movies. The top 10 worst movies of 2018. Over and out.